part two of our conversation with Steve Picaro of Toto. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. First off, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We need you, man. And click on the bell notification so you don't miss any of our interviews. Lots coming up. And music news, even more coming up. Part two of our conversation with Steve Picaro. You know, I'll tell you one thing I learned from the first album is not to listen to my own stuff so much. You know, I, uh, um, yeah, I need to have a little more distance. I would love to work with a producer who really got me, but I just, that solo album was just me removing all excuses at the time to not why I hadn't done a solo album up to that point. You know, it's, I've learned a hell of a lot. I've learned a lot just to have even a little more, a little more distance. And, uh, cause I can easily fall in love with my own stuff. And uh, um, it needs to get needs to be better than that. So how's the tour going? The tour's going great. It's it really is. I, I love playing small theaters like that, as opposed to you know you do a lot of these summer concerts and they're fun, and in Europe, but they're like building a stage in the middle of nowhere, maybe next to a castle, or even here when, when it's a a state fair or some music festival, and they build a stage in the middle of nowhere, and they haven't figured out all the RF interference and all the, you know, sometimes it's windy, you see those things on the news where those stages blow over. Yeah. Uh, it's They can be scary, quite quite frankly. And, and you know, there's these drops. Sometimes they'll put a, a curtain or whatever, and you won't know. You'll think there's a wall next to that, and it's a 50-foot drop to the ground. It's... Uh, um, I love being in these kind of theaters where there's stages, they were made to for concerts and for music. And, uh, um, you know, it's it's striking the difference in the business we do in Europe compared to the United States. But um, as long as we're playing in theaters like this, it, it still feels great, you know? We yeah. still feel like we're uh, the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show sometimes. You know? How much of the seventh one were you part of? And why was it... Is it because you said you were leaving that you were a sort of a guest on that album? Yeah, no, the way um, that varied greatly as far as my um, my involvement with the with the records after I left the band. But uh, the seventh one, I did quite a bit of work on, um, for sure. Just the just what the difference was. I'd always been Dave's synth guy. You know what I mean. Yeah. And, and I always will be Dave Synth guy, you know what I'm saying? Whether uh, uh, I'm in the band or not. So that continued. But as far as me spending days on a solo or, you know what I mean? Doing, putting in like what I did to a Rosanna solo or spending the time that I spent, that was over. You know what I mean? I, what I did was just finally do what the guys had been begging me to do, which was to just treat Toto sessions like any other session. You know, get in there, do it, go away after three hours so they can get on to the next thing. Not be spending days at the manor in a David's place orchestrating these synth extravaganzas. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's before the Internet. First uh, album I ever reviewed professionally and got paid for it. And I remember just being pissed off that you weren't there. I'm going, what? What happened? What? What happened? It's like when Joe left. I remember thinking, oh, really? What? What's going on? I wrote actually, this is, this. Uh, uh, you know, I wrote the band a nasty letter. Uh, <laughs> I remember going, oh, radio guys don't do that. But I did. I wrote the band a nasty letter um, uh, about did... you and about, about uh, Joe. Joe? <laughs> Good. What is <laughs> no, not to me. You're my hero. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, that was good. Good times. Um, what about your uh, your daughter Heather? Is she still pursuing music? She sure is. As a matter of fact, you know Heather's this Renaissance woman whose focus changes from time to time. But lately, she she kind of uh, um, she's been focusing in this amazing way where she she wrote this great tune, recorded it, and then immediately called in every favor she could and uh, uh, made this amazing video for it. As a matter of fact, I'll send you a link yeah. uh, when it's done. She, she showed me a rough cut right before I left. And, you know, the production values now, you know, the cameras you can rent and and uh, uh, and just Heather's taste and style. It's it's pretty mind boggling. What an amazing job she did. So she did some of the photography for the band as well, right? On Total 14, she kind of art directed the album. She did a lot. You know, this is what I'm saying. She's, you know, she's kind of all over the place. She hooked us up with this guy, Nick Taylor, who actually did 
the actual album cover of, of Toto uh, of 14. He actually composited that visual. But um, Heather was kind of overseeing the whole thing and actually did a lot of the photography in the uh, booklet. And stuff. Yeah, that was that was really well done. I love that whole project. But the, so yeah. no more the Picaro Brothers movie is not going to happen then. Not right now. No, okay. no. Not right now. They're just, uh, uh, you know, there just isn't that much interest, you know, as far as financing it goes. Or, I mean, he's hoping. I think he's hoping that, uh, you know, someone comes swooping in and and uh, helps him out financially in a big way or something like that. But no one seems to be holding their breath. More from Steve Picard coming up in a few days. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. Mm -hmm.